Hello and welcome to this video review. I'm going to talk about and show all the features of the new Vortex Razer Gen 3 1 to 10 by 24 wide angle rifle scope. This is one of the biggest news in uh, this year's SHOT Show in 2020. And I also think it was one of the most uh, anticipated um, items in this year. Uh, Vortex started already, I think, one month or two months before the introduction with small teasers. And everybody was expecting a new Razer 1 to 8 or something like that. And then they come out with a 10 times zoom uh, rifle scope. The first of its kind for Vortex, so the first Gen 3 uh, from Razer series, even though we know that Razer series consisted out of many different scopes in, in three generations. So the first generation was 1 to 4 and uh, 5 to 20 by 50. 1 to 4 was normally 24 millimeter, it had the 24 millimeter lens. Then in the second generation, uh, 1 to 6. And now in the third generation, 1 to 10. Um, and this one is really meant for CQB, so close quarter battle. Um, and normally for all dynamical shooters and everybody who needs a really the best premium scope on, on their AR rifle or, or anything similar. You see the colors are very unique and immediately from the design and the color especially you see that this is a vortex because they are they they use this color pattern or this uh, color shim for I think since 2010 or something like that in all the generations of wipers. So, <clears throat> um, first of all, this is immediate successor of the second generation 1 to 6 scope, but I do have to tell that um, there were other tries from other manufacturers to produce 1 to 8 and 1 to 10 rifle scopes in the past. So, I think the first 1 to 8 with a 34 millimeter tube because this is also very unique with this scope. It doesn't feature a 30 millimeter tube like it's very common on one wide angle scopes. It features 34 millimeter central tube. And we see now obviously that if you wish to produce a scope with a 8 time or 10 time zoom, it's really, really hard in a 30 millimeter tube. Because the first scope like this was Premier Reticles many years ago, 1 to 8 model. Then Minox came out with their 1 to 8 model, which was basically a clone of the Premier. And it's still in production and still one of the best scopes in this uh, segment. Ayor also came out with 1 to 10 scopes, I think six, seven years ago. March from Japan, they also produced 1 to 10 scopes. And in recent years, Primary Arms was uh, is also producing 1 to 10 uh, wide angle tactical scope with a 34 millimeter central tube. So the first 10 time zoom uh, scope in this class uh, was made by Ayor, then March and now normally also Vortex. What it is true is that neither Ayor, neither March was, were really commercially successful. I would say the reason behind it is that uh, they didn't understand the fine nuances and all the features you need to offer in, in a scope for for this group of users. And this is something what Vortex really knows best. So I am sure that this is going to be the first 1 to 10 scope that's going to sell really, really well. In uh, in the category of 1 to 8, which are really similar scopes, then we there we have seen the whole renaissance of many different hunting models and um, and tactical models but 1 to 10, they're really, really rare. If I go through the basic physical features, so everything is made out of metal and it has a distinct vortex design. You, know, you can see on fast focus, this pattern, and then on the magnification ring, the pattern is the same like on all vortex scopes in, in, in the last couple of years. Um, I see that the, I think that Viper PST were the first ones to use this this design and it's really really nice. You immediately see it's Vortex and it's, it says high quality all over it. The price point of this is roughly 2400 euros so it's really really high. It's up there with Minox, it's up there with uh, Steiner Tactical 128, it's up there with all the best with, with Night Force, with 
Schmidt and Bender normally, they also have one to eight, but in a 30 millimeter tube. So it's really equally expensive, but also equal in optical performance. It's fully waterproofed. It's uh, purged with argon. So it's also completely fog proofed. It features many different lens coatings. It also features a special lens coating on the external lenses to protect them from scratches and so on. And it's really well made. Uh, what's really funny is it's very light, only 610 grams. So 600 grams, really, really light, uh, even lighter than the second generation of the, of the one to six model that Vortex produced. And this is very, very positive. What's also very positive, it's very short, 25 centimeters, a bit more than 25, but still really short, really light, well made. And I think that they decided to make, to make it a light scope because I'm sure that many um, people criticize that the only really weak point of the previous uh, second generation uh, razor was its weight. Everything else was really good. Uh, the parallax is normally fixed at uh, 100 yards. 91 meters. Uh, the illumination of the reticle is uh, controlled here on this side turret, which is lockable, like on all previous razor scopes. Really, really nice feature also. What you get in the box? You get normally a certificate that it passed inspection. You get a really detailed, nice reticle manual because the reticle is in the first focal place uh, first focal plane so you need a reticle like this um, well you need a manual for a reticle like this which explains all the subtensions and everything it also has a ranging scale inside and there are two reticles available they're always matched with the clicks this is a mil version or mrat version so it features some milli radian clicks and also milli radiant reticle subtensions uh, you get a normal manual, which provides information for everything, how to mount it, how to properly use it, and so on. Um, you also get an included throw lever, which is a nice touch, even though for 2400 euros you expect this. Basic plastic lens caps, the tool for resetting of turrets. This is the throw lever, which I spoke about. You get the batteries, the, uh, the reticle is powered with a normal CR2032 batteries and a lens cleaning cloth. So normally you also get a Team Vortex nice label, a sticker with it. Okay, it's made in Japan, like all razor scopes with an exception of the AMG which is made in, in the US. And it comes with a really famous VIP warranty from Vortex. In European terms, we would say 30 years warranty. No matter what happens, they will repair it or, or give you a new one. And we all know that Vortex warranty is one of the best in the industry, if not the best. They, I think that they owe a lot of their success to this warranty and all the after sales support they give to their customers. If we go to the reticle, the reticle is in the first focal plane and it's a Christmas tree reticle, similar like Horus reticles or all modern tactical reticles. I can show you once more how the reticle looks like. And if you can see these red dots inside. Uh, when you put the scope on one time on power one, which is an actual power one, so no magnification, all these lines, all these dots and everything disappears you only are able to see if normally the illumination is turned on the dot inside and it, you can see the small circle around the dot you see this small circle this small circle is partially transparent so when you put it on a high magnification it's not that um, it doesn't get away in a way as with other reticles so this was really fine-tuned and I, I, I like what they did because when you look through the scope and when you're trying to use the reticle you see that they really thought about everything and they polished how the reticle subtensions are in this reticle because this is a problem of some other scopes in this category let's say IOR and March that the reticle is just not uh, equally usable at all magnifications. This is a general problem with scopes with such huge zoom factors because with 10 times zoom 
you always know that you will have a problem seeing the reticle either at maximum magnification or at the lowest magnification because usually it's like this at the lowest magnification the reticle is not visible enough at the highest magnification the reticle is too thick i think that when vortex was designing this scope they really put their best effort into designing of reticle so that it's really really used usable at all magnifications in this huge range one to ten it really works nice because when you put it on one everything else disappears you only see a central dot when you put it on 10 you're able to use all the uh, the holdovers and the whole christmas tree for for um, points of aim so it's really nicely made the reticle itself is also daytime bright it has an automatic turn off function it has a position sensor it turns off itself when it's stationary for i think six hours or something like that it has 11 intensity levels and between each intensity level you have a off position really nice so you're able to just turn it off anytime you wish let's say that eight was your um, favorite or the most suitable intensity level in either ways from eight to seven or to nine you have an off position and then you're able also to lock the illumination turret really really nice very nice touch um, and as i said the reticle is really fine-tuned what i do miss a little bit is that i think in in the scopes with such huge zoom factor the sfp so second focal plane dot and a first focal plane reticle combination is maybe even better than than this one even though they really polish the first focal plane reticle if you go to the turrets nothing new here basically completely the same design than on other razors and vipers but the feeling and how the clicks are audible and crisp this is better than before because we know that on the PSTs which have the same uh, turret design they're really sturdy it's really hard to click and also on the gen 2 it's not as nice as here so same design but completely different feeling and really nice audible clicks the turrets are also really low profile so you will not have problems putting additional red dot reflex sight on the side of this uh, scope uh, clicks on this particular model are uh, uh, one centimeter so they're matched with the reticle and if you go for the moa version you again get a, a matched um, reticle and the turret turret clicks the elevation range is uh, 30 mils really a lot but this is also expected from a wide angle scope uh, the turrets are multi-turn they don't have any turn indicator not needed on a scope like this but they are able to be set to zero so they are resettable with this tool that you're getting with it um, okay now if we go to the optical performance so the magnification range is 1 to 10 and the objective lens is 24 millimeters i do have to say that with a 10 times zoom i expected many more compromises in terms of optical performance but the, the scope is really clear and it has wide field of view uh, almost 40 meters so it's not quite in the in the same league like like let's say Kahl SK18 or or Swarovski Z8, uh, but still it is close, and it has no tunnel effect whatsoever. It's basically you only see the image at one time magnification, and then everything else around it is really crisp, and no no black tunnel around it really really nice it's easy to be used with both eyes open so optically it is in top notch it is in premium segment um, the eye relief is normally 91 millimeters the eye box i would say it's not like on one to six scopes but this is expected this is one to ten scopes so on, on uh, in terms of eye box this is probably the only compromise uh, and I, I do have to say that um, even at 10 times magnification, the optics is still 
way on way higher level than I expected. Okay, it's a really expensive scope, but still the optics is really good. So now we came to the final part of my review, where I do, where I go through a small summary of all the positives and all the points where there is still room for improvement. Okay, so the first thing what is really positive is the zoom factor. 10 times zoom factor and the optical performance at this zoom factor, it is really good. Because honestly speaking with 10 times zoom uh, rifle scopes, you can expect some compromises in terms of optics, but not with this vortex. I also like the build quality, superb build quality, like with all the razors and the lightness. You see, I'm, I'm holding this scope really easily. The second generation, I wouldn't be able to hold it like this. 600 grams, really, really light. I also like the reticle design. They really polished so that it's really usable because many manufacturers when even with six times zoom or eight times zoom, so one to eight scopes and one to six scopes, they have problems if they are first focal plane scopes that the reticle is not really usable at all magnifications. In this particular model, I think that uh, this fine tuning of all reticle substantions was done the best I have seen until now. I also like that there is no tunnel effect and I like the box in which it comes with the throw lever included for 2400 euros you expect to the throw lever to be included um okay where things could have been done better where is still some room for improvement so if we went through the sweets at the start let's go through the sour now i think that with the 2400 euro scope the lens covers should be better a small thing but i think it would be a nice touch I also think that the price point, 2,400 euros, it's, it's competing directly with Schmidt & Bender, with Swarovski, with Kales, with all the European brands. And at least in Europe, Vortex is still not considered to be in the same class. It's normal. In the US, I understand. In the US, this is American company and we all know what Vortex did in the last 10 years. What kind of uh, progress it did in 10 years. But in Europe, you have to understand that Zeiss and Swarovski, they're producing sport optics for 70 years, size even more, size for more than 100 years. So they do have some head start. And Vortex coming out with a scope in the same price class uh, in Europe is going to be a little bit challenging, but I, I am sure that they will succeed to be accepted in the premium, premium class as, as equals in, in the future, which comes um, most definitely. But still in 2020, 2,400 euros in Europe for this scope, a lot of people will think, why shouldn't I buy a Swarovski? Why shouldn't I buy a Zeiss? Or why shouldn't I buy a Minox ZP? Um, I also think that for this price class, the field of view of 39 meters could have been done a little bit better. Let's be honest, um, let's say Leica 1 to 6 has 45 meters of field of view. Swarovski has 43 meters of field of view. Okay, you say additional three meters, it doesn't matter that much. That's additional 10%. It's not, okay, they are also eight times zoom, but still. Um, so I am thinking that this scope is going to be running against tough co uh, competition. What I also think is that uh, they really super polished the design of the reticle, but uh, if they would went into into a um, direction to put a dot in a second focal plane and the reticle in the first focal plane, to, so to have in both fo photo, uh, focal planes parts of the reticle, the scope would have been even better. This is something what Schmidt and Bender does. This is something what Minox does. Minox was the first one who did it. Uh, even though Schmidt and Bender did show their one to eight scope, um, the PM2 before Minox, but they didn't um, they didn't launch it on the on the market actually before it. I think that that configuration for 10 times zoom could have been even better than than just FFP reticle, which is really well thought. All in all, uh, you are getting a solid piece of equipment for this money. You are getting something what is worth of this price and you are getting the best warranty. So if you wish to be really uh, secure with your purchase and looking something in the, in the top premium class, this is a really viable option. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something useful. If not, please send us an email or check our webpage.